Let's talk about some lessons we've learned. Because I'm sure people listening are like, what are some do's and don'ts or what shouldn't I do? What should I avoid? What should I double down on? Maybe they want to leave their job. Maybe they want to transition full-time online. Maybe they want a side hustle. Maybe they want to diversify their portfolio. Maybe they want to leave the corporate grind, right? What are some of the lessons that you've picked up along the way? Probably there is uh, 10,695 <laughs> lessons that I picked up. Yeah. How many hours do you have? <laughs> oh, dude. Yeah, holy shit. I, I literally was very tempted right now to grab my phone because I have like for every section of, of something I create like lessons learned and principles and and that kind of stuff. And they're usually like one-liners, like one-liners that I just yeah. like, you know, stand by. So here's a one-liner. Uh, this is something that I told you yesterday when we were talking. And it's um, never take advice uh, uh, horizontally, always take advice vertically. And what that means is always find someone who is way ahead of you to take advice from them because I've made the mistake of taking something from someone when it was working for them that is, you know, at or right around my level, uh, whether if that's in sales, marketing, whatever it is, right? And I am implemented in my business. And then, you know, six months later, I'm like, well, fuck, why is this not working? I go back to them and they're like, yeah, well, it worked for me for like three days and then it stopped working. But they got so excited about it, they told the world about it, and then they looked like the the the, the fucking the hot shot for a moment, and then it failed. But then when you, like, when, I, uh, when I'm helping, for example, I, the same guy that I was telling you about how his sister is uh, trying to learn uh, graphic design and stuff like that, um, he's probably, like, his business is probably the 10th, you know, 10th of the size of BJK University. <clears throat> And I literally said, like, over the last year and a half, we would hang out maybe once a quarter, like, for dinner, lunch, whatever, coffee or something like that, and we'll spend an hour. And then, you know, we'll be talking, like, in conversation. I, like, it's not even intentional that I'm trying to coach him. In conversation, he would ask questions, I would respond. His business has 8 x in the last about 14 months from me unintentionally coaching him. Huh. Yeah. Because again, it has been like I'm so far ahead of him, where it's like I've seen the cycles, I've seen all this stuff where I can literally just look at his business, break it apart, give him one, two things, and then it can exponentially explode his business. And so this is why it's very important for you that that's watching. If you're learning, you know, if you wanted to 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 learn how to sell on Amazon, or if you want to start a business, you want to start investing, if you want to get into real estate, if you want to, you know, lose ten pounds or whatever, find someone that's so far ahead of you. That it's like there's no doubt in your mind that this person is just testing this thing and maybe it's working, maybe it's not, and you're kind of like taking uh, some parts of it. Yeah, that's a really good one, dude. That's a really good one. Um, the, the, the power of mentorship and coaching is uh, it's something you can't even put a price on. And like you said, a lot of times... It comes in conversations, but I mean, it sounds to me like whoever that gentleman is, he's asking the right fucking questions, isn't he? Yes. Right. So, so that's, that's something that I've definitely picked up over the years. You want to be, um, you know, we go to these masterminds and we go to these community events all the time, right. With people in our industry. And when we go there, I, I always tell myself, because I can talk, I don't know if you've noticed, I can talk, right. I can just run my mouth for fucking hours about things I'm passionate about. But when I go to these events, like I intentionally like have a mantra playing in my mind the entire time. It's like two years, one mouth, two years, one mouth, two years, one mouth. I'm just telling myself like, shut the fuck up, ask questions, ask questions, listen, listen, and listen. And um, the value you get from just being a fly on the wall, if you're in the right room, right? Like if you go to our, our community and you go into the, the section where they're talking about, you know, product research, or whatever it may be. You don't have to ask a question or, or contribute in there. You can just scroll and you're like, oh shit, that guy's six months ahead of me. Oh shit, that guy's launching his fourth product. Well, what did he say there about that thing? Oh, that's interesting. And you just pick these little pieces and start putting the puzzle together for yourself. And again, progress equals happiness. So you just go, you pick a piece here, you pick a piece there, you put your pieces together for yourself. You're like, oh, you know what? I just figured out my next couple moves. I'm going to go to the live coaching session today, get it validated from one of the coaches. Then I'm going to go do my work. And I just made some amazing progress 
later at dinner that night, you know you're going to sit down with your your partner, your significant other, your friends, your family, whatever, your kids, and you're going to be like, oh man, I made some great progress today. I learned this thing from this guy and I did it, right? And that's the power of having people around you and actually having two ears and one mouth, right? Versus just and trying to like put shit out there for no reason, right? What about this, man? What about this? A lot of people start businesses and or they go into projects or things. Amazon is an example. I have lots of examples. Um, you go into things and you feel like maybe you bit off more than you can chew. And so possibly you start self-sabotaging. You have self-doubt. Have you ever been in a position where you help someone through self-doubt? Or you've seen someone who is in a position of self-doubt or maybe yourself where you had to double down on belief to get through it? And where did that come from? Um, <clears throat> so for me, I learned, uh, recently I learned a, a, an exercise uh, and I call it the certainty exercise. Every single one of us here um, has gone through a, a, a situation where <clears throat> at some point, whatever the, the goal was or whatever we were trying to accomplish seemed like out of reach, like way out of reach, like no fucking way. There is no way I'm going to accomplish this. Somehow with brute force, with, you know, incredible amounts of, of tenacity of just like force and you just kept on, you know, grind, whatever it is, motivation, you cracked through and you made it to the other side, right? And so what I try to do every time I have those you know, negative talk, negative self-talk or belief or whatever it is, disbelief, is I try to bring up a situation where I once couldn't, did not believe that I, I, I could accomplish the result that I was trying to accomplish and made it happen. And then just think about that. And I'm like, okay, at some point in my life, I thought this wasn't possible, but I made it possible. What can I learn from that? What did I do differently that I would do normally that I can take and apply in this position, in this situation, and also overcome these obstacles, these disbeliefs. Because at the end of the day, the only thing that's holding you back is you, and it's 80% psychology. So it's all in your mind, right?